Dear students, in this lecture video, we discuss one of the analytical techniques in chemistry laboratory that is conductometric titrations. What are conductometric titrations? The process of determining the quantity of a sample by adding measured increments of a titrant until the end point is reached, the titration is monitored by measuring the conductance of the solution. Simply, one titrant is taken in the burette and a test solution is taken in the beaker and a conductivity cell is placed in it, we start using measuring the conductance value. So, when you add the titrant from the burette, there is a change in concentration of the titrate. So, there is a change in the conductivity values. Using these values, we locate the end point. Such method is called conductometric titration method. Now, the conductance or the electrolytic conductance is measured by using conductivity cell. The conductivity cell is a glass tube which consists of two electrodes. So, these two electrodes are enclosed in a glass tube over here. You can see this is a uh, this type of electrode we have in our chemistry laboratory and uh, these two are the electrodes which are enclosed in it and these electrodes are made up of any conducting material like graphite, stainless steel or platinum and these they are fixed in this glass tube they are with a specific distance they are separated with a fixed distance and their surface area also a fixed one. So, the distance between these two electrodes we indicate with L and the, their area of cross section with A and uh, we can define the cell constant based on this. The ratio of distance between two electrodes to the area of the electrodes that is by formula cell constant is equal to we can write uh, distance between two electrodes by area of the electrodes that is L by A and uh, units for this cell constant is centimeter inverse that is L is equal to centimeter and area of cross section is centimeter square and we get the centimeter inverse as the uh, centimeter inverse are the units as cell for the cell constant. Now this is the experimental setup of the conductometric titration. So this is one digital conductivity meter you can see on which we have the this is a display on which we read the conductivity values and this is a knob to set the range of the conductance and one calibration knob and this is a button used to change the mode of the instrument check mode or read mode and a conductivity cell fix it to the instrument. See conductivity cell is placed in the test solution. This is a schematic diagram of the conductometry. So here two electrodes are there in a conductive cell. They are placed in the test solution and we are using a glass rod to stir it. The terminals of this conductive cell are connected to a conductivity meter and here this conductivity cell is a type of cell that is a electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell in the sense by passing the electricity, we bring out a chemical change. It is a non-spontaneous process. Here we are passing the electricity and uh, getting done the chemical reaction. Now, from the burette, we drop the titrant to this test solution and we observe the change in the conductance on this uh, display and uh, we note down we, using these values, we will be plotting a graph to get the end point. Now, in our syllabus, we have three experiments. The first one, titration of strong acid with strong base in which we are using hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide solutions. And the second experiment, titration of weak acid with strong base, acetic acid titration against the sodium hydroxide. And third one is uh, mixture of strong acid and weak acid here, HCl and uh, acetic acid mixture is given which is titrated against the sodium hydroxide. Before going to discuss any experiment, first uh, we understand the principle involved behind it. So, the electrolytic conductance depends on the following factors. The first one is number of ions. 
number of ions so electrolytic conductivity depends on the charge charge on the ion is responsible for the conductance so number of ions increasing means the conductance increases or when charge on ion increases then also the conductance increases and second one mobility of the ions mobility so when mobility is high the movement of ion is more the conductance also more and temperature when we raise the temperature the kinetic energy of the molecules or particles in the solution increase means uh, the their vibration or the movement in the solution increasing so conductance increases with the rise in temperature and the fourth one nature of the electrolyte depending on the strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte here for a strong electrolyte it ionizes 100 percent produces more number of ions so conductance is more in case of strong electrolyte whereas uh, for weak electrolyte it is a uh, poorly ionized uh, number of ions are less uh, the conductance also less now it is a uh, these are the factors which are common for all the experiments we have to explain now the first titration titration of strong acid with strong base hydrochloric acid against the sodium hydroxide titration so first uh, in the beaker we take the test solution unknown concentration of hcl about 20 ml in which we place the conductivity cell so conductivity cell is completely dipped into the hcl solution at this point what would be the conductivity here hcl is a strong acid which ionizes 100 percent splits into h plus and cl minus ions now the mobility of this h plus ion is uh, very high uh, the mobility is uh, higher than any other ion that is the reason when H plus ion is present in the solution, it predominates the electrolytic conductivity. Due to high mobility of the H plus ions, initially the conductance is very high. Let us see the graph when we plot conductance versus volume of sodium hydroxide added to the HCl. Now the conductance is initially very high. Now from the burette, we drop sodium hydroxide solution. This sodium hydroxide can be added in either in 0.5 ml interval or 1 ml interval. So and each time we steal the solution and note down the changing the conductivity values. So during this uh, addition, the reaction between sodium hydroxide and HCl is the sodium chloride and water. Here the highly mobile H plus ions are neutralized and converted to neutral water molecules that means the h plus ion concentration is decreasing the number of h plus ions are decreasing with the titration obviously the conductance also decreases so it falls down with the addition of the sodium hydroxide you can see the fall in um, readings of the in this graph so you can see with the addition of sodium hydroxide the conductance is falling down you can see the fall in the readings in this graph now this fall down takes place until all the hcl is neutralized that means uh, until uh, we reach the equivalence point beyond this point we continue the titration um, adding the sodium hydroxide the sodium hydroxide is uh, remain in the solution beyond the end point uh, and this uh, sodium hydroxide is also a strong electrolyte which uh, splits up into sodium and hydroxyl ions these hydroxyl ions are second highest mobility second highly mobile ions after h plus so h hydroxyl ions also predominate the electrolyte conductance so with the addition of the sodium hydroxide again you will observe the increase in the conductance values in the graph you can see the readings are increasing after completion of the titration we plot a graph we draw two straight lines 
so we obtain two straight lines uh, uh, we take a long scale draw the two straight lines see that uh, maximum points are coinciding with the line so this is one line i have drawn and uh, another line on this side uh, the point of intersection when you extrapolate these two lines uh, the point of intersection gives you the equivalence point uh, that is volume of base required to neutralize the acid here the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the HCl which we indicate as V2 ml in the calculation part. This is the principle behind titration of strong acid with strong base. In this titration, initially the conductance is very high due to highly mobile H plus ions and it is falling down with the addition of sodium hydroxide due to their the, the H plus ions are converted into neutral water molecule. Again, beyond the end point, sodium hydroxide is remain in the solution due to highly mobile hydroxyl ions. Again, the conductance is increasing. We get a V-shaped curve in this titration. Now, let us go to the procedure. So, procedure is as usual, we do in three steps. First step, we prepare a standard solution to standardize the link solution. Our link solution is sodium hydroxide. To sodium hydroxide is a base to new, to calculate the concentration to determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide. We use a standard acid. So in our experiment, we are preparing a standard oxalic acid solution. Um, so this is a procedure simple one. We weigh out accurately around 1.26 grams of oxalic acid approximately 1.26 so that so the, here we take this is let us say this is oxalic acid we have weighed here we take w1 and w2 where w1 is the weight of oxalic acid along with the weighing bottle and w2 is the weight of the empty bottle and difference of w1 w2 gives you the weight of the oxalic acid this oxalic acid is transferred into a standardization flask of 100 ml. First, we dissolve it in adequate amount of water when we, uh, when we observe the clear solution. Make up to the mark and uh, shake it thoroughly to ensure uniform concentration. This is part A and we can calculate the normality for it uh, in later part. Next, uh, part B, we standardize the sodium hydroxide solution. So we pipette out this uh, prepared standard oxalic acid solution of 20 ml into the conical flask here and to this we, we add uh, two three drops of the phenolphthalein indicator from the burette we drop sodium hydroxide and at the end uh, we continue the titration till we get uh, a pink color. So when we observe pink color we stop titration and we note down the reading as V2 ml here. Volume of oxalic acid pipetted out V1, already we know that 20 ml and uh, volume of sodium hydroxide, it is uh, run down from the burette uh, only will come to know after the titration that is V2 ml. This is part B. Whereas part C, part C is a um, estimation part in which we are going to use the instrument. Yeah. This is a digital conductivity meter. So, and using this conductivity meter, we are going to measure the conductance of the test solution given to you. Now, so before that, uh, we, are, we have three knobs on this instrument. The first one is a calibration knob. We can adjust uh, using this, uh, uh, we can calibrate the instrument using this button. And the second one, we have the scales, different ranges on this instrument, uh, like 10, 100, 1K, 10K, uh, 100K. So depending on the solution we are using, on the type of the solution we are using, we can set the range using this knob. And also, and the knob it is to set the cell constant. And also we have a button here, we can set, we have two modes using, we can set two modes in this button. The up, upside, uh, we have check mode and uh, downward we have the read mode. So before going to start the experiment, uh, we have to calibrate the instrument in check mode. So let me keep it in the check mode now. 
so as i am using a strong acid that is hydrochloric acid so i am setting the range to 100k on which uh, i am this calibration i am adjusting to 50 so here you can adjust to either 50 or 100 so um, to reduce the to minimize the errors i am setting to 50 only because the voltage so you see that the voltage is less and uh, so that there won't be any load on the capacitors and it gives accurate results so that is the reason i am adjusting to 50 instead of 100 now i keep it in the read mode and uh, the important one is a uh, conductivity cell so this conductivity cell you can see it is a electrolytic electrolytic cell electrolytic cell means uh, by passing the electricity we can bring out a chemical change so it is a non spontaneous reaction we bring out the change by passing the electricity so that type of cell is a conductive cell now here we have two platinum electrodes so this side and uh, other side they are uh, enclosed they are enclosed in a glass tube so their distance is fixed here and uh, the cell constant of this uh, conductivity cell it is given on the top of the uh, this uh, um, conductivity cell is uh, uh, close to 1 it is given as 0 0.97 so close to 1 now i place this conductivity cell in the test solution and we must ensure that uh, the cell is completely dipped the platinum electrodes must be immersed properly in the solution then we can start the experiment now here this is the initial reading shown by the solution now 11.2 and let us uh, note down this so this is the tabular form we have so volume of the base added here i am using sodium hydroxide in this beaker and uh, conductance uh, which we are going to read on the instrument now let me note down this uh, initial reading so at 0 ml before addition of the sodium hydroxide, the reading is about 11.3 milli Siemens. Now, I start adding this sodium hydroxide from the burette. So here, we add the sodium hydroxide in a 0.5 interval, uh, 0.5 ml intervals or uh, 1 ml intervals. So uh, to make it easy, now I am going to add only 1 ml in each interval. First, to drop the solution about 1 ml from the burette. So then stop the cork. Now 1 ml of sodium hydroxide is dropped into the test solution. Now stir it for properly so that we observe some change in the conductance on this instrument. And note on this reading. So at 1 ml, 1 ml, this is the change in conductance and uh, it is about 10.2 uh, millisiemens. Similarly, so we go on, keep on adding uh, 1 ml in each interval, 1 ml in each interval and uh, note down the readings accordingly. Stop it. Now you have seen the demonstration how to use the conductivity meter that uh, and conductivity cell placed in the HCL and the sodium hydroxide dropped from the burette uh, by and we are uh, we have observed the conductance uh, which are recorded in the observation and calculation book. Now go for the observations and calculations part. So all these uh, observations and calculations are there in your manual, uh, they are printed readily. You can uh, refer to your uh, laboratory manual. First, uh, we have prepared a standard oxalic acid solution, so, weighed uh, oxalic acid. First W1, that is uh, weight of the bottle along with oxalic acid and W2, empty bottle and difference, difference of these two gives you the weight of the oxalic acid. And here we calculate the normal of the standard oxalic acid that is we indicate with N1. N1 is equal to W1 minus W2 by gram equivalent weight into 1000 by volume in ml. The gram equivalent weight of the oxalic acid is 63. So gram molecular weight is 126. Oxalic acid valence is 2. So 126 by 2 it is 63. And volume 
is 100 ml only we prepare the 100 ml solution in the standard flask this is a part a calculation and in part b so we have this type of tabular form here um, volume of the oxalic acid pipetted out that is a always 20 ml there there is no change in the pipette we use only 20 ml pipette and uh, from the burette we drop the sodium hydroxide solution and uh, where we observe the color change we stop the cork and note down the volume here we repeat the titration until we get uh, two concrete values so that value we take as a v2 ml and this is the calculation using the law of normality that is n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 formula where n1 is the normal of the standard oxalic acid solution and v1 as the v1 is the volume of standard oxalic acid pipetted out into the conical flask where n2 is the normal of sodium hydroxide we have to calculate now and v2 is the volume of sodium hydroxide run down from the burette so finally we calculate the n2 value that is a normal of the sodium hydroxide then part c which we work on instrument so here uh, we re record the values initially the conductance of the solution at 0 ml then 1 ml then 2 ml in this way we are adding 1 ml 2 ml 3 ml intervals and we obtain the readings using those readings conductance this is conductance versus volume of sodium hydroxide so conductance is taken on the y axis and uh, volume of sodium hydroxide is uh, taken on the x axis when we plot a graph uh, we get uh, two type of two straight lines uh, this type of two straight lines and uh, the point of intersection of these two lines is uh, your end point that is uh, v2 dash ml v2 dash ml using this value we calculate the normal of test solution unknown concentration of the hcl so formula again law of normal is n2 v2 dash is equal to n3 v3 where n2 is the normal of sodium hydroxide already we know in part b step and v2 dash is the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize our unknown acid hcl here uh, this value is obtained from the graph and n3 is the normality of the uh, test solution which we are going to find out hcl this is a hcl normality unknown test solution so we are going to calculate and v3 is the volume of test solution taken in the beaker that is also 20 ml so here n2 is the normal of sodium hydroxide solution v2 dash is the volume of sodium hydroxide from the graph n3 is the volume of HCl solution we are going to calculate now and v3 is the volume of HCl solution pipetted out into the beaker that is about 20 ml and we obtain the n3 value normal of the HCl by using this we calculate the amount of HCl normal into 36.5 it is a gram mark per weight of HCl we get the value in grams per liter this is about the titration of strong acid versus strong base titration of hcl against the sodium hydroxide estimation of hcl by conductometric titration so for uh, remaining two experiments also we have same procedure same part a part b and part c we are operating on the uh, operating the instrument so that is the reason i am not going to repeat the procedure only the principle of the remaining two experiments I will explain and there, thereby I will close the lecture. Now the titration of weak acid with strong base. Hestic acid, this time it is uh, taken in the beaker and uh, we place the conductivity cell in it. Then what is the initial conductivity of the hestic acid? We know hestic acid is a weak acid, it is feebly ionized in the solution it uh, establish a dynamic equilibrium it ionizes in this manner acetic acid uh, is ionized to acetate and uh, h plus ions so it is a dynamic equilibrium in which uh, this uh, ions exchange with the acetic acid uh, instantly they appear and disappear they appear and uh, immediately combine here 
though this h plus n is hyan is highly mobile it is not free it is uh, involved in the dynamic equilibrium that is the reason the initial conductivity of the st acid is uh, very low again we plot the graph here conductance versus volume of sodium hydroxide now the initial conductance is uh, very low here from the burette we start adding sodium hydroxide solution when sodium hydroxide is added the neutralization reaction occurs between acetic acid and uh, sodium hydroxide which forms the sodium acetate and uh, neutral water molecule sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte which ionizes 100% produces sodium and uh, acetate ions at this stage due to the common ion effect uh, acetic acid equilibrium it will disappear it will suppress the formation of acetate and h plus ions only acetic acid is remain in that so, and uh, only sodium hydroxides are present there the mobility of the sodium hydro sodium ions sorry the mobility of the sodium ions are very less that is the reason with this titration we observe slow increase in the conductance so here you can see the readings are slowly increasing as the number of sodium ions are increasing in the solution till the we reach the equivalence point beyond the equivalence point uh, the um, further uh, sodium hydroxide is added this sodium hydroxide is uh, remain in the solution uh, we know sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte which produces uh, freely or highly mobile hydroxyl ions obviously we observe a clear increase in the conductance of the solution now we plot the graph we obtain two straight lines here and the point of intersection gives you the end point that is v2 dash the amount of sodium hydroxide uh, sorry the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the hcl this is the principle involved behind uh, titration of weak acid with strong base that is uh, acetic acid titration with the sodium hydroxide and procedure is same in three parts part a we prepare the standard oxalic acid solution part b standardization of uh, sodium hydroxide solution and part c we estimate the acetic acid uh, by using the conductivity meter next the last experiment mixture of strong acid weak acid with strong base so strong acid hcl and weak acid acetic acid mixture is given and we are going to titrate it against the sodium hydroxide this time the mixture is taken in the beaker acid mixture is taken in the beaker we place the conductivity cell and what is the initial conductivity so in the mixture we have hcl and acetic acid so HCl is a strong electrolyte which produces H plus and Cl minus ions and acetic acid is a weak electrolyte which uh, maintains a dynamic equilibrium with its counter ions acetate ion and H plus ion due to the common ion effect due to the common ion effect that is in presence of a common ion a weak dissociation of a weak electrolyte is suppressed by the strong electrolyte so dissociation of the weak electrolyte is suppressed in presence of a common ion that is called common common ion effect so here we have common ion h plus in both the electrolytes hcl strong acid can producing the h plus acetic acid weak acid it is producing h plus due to common ion the dissociation of this acetic acid is suppressed initially the h plus ions are produced from the hcl only so hcl only contributing the initial conductivity we know h plus ions are highly mobile the conductance is very high in the beginning so you can see with the addition of sodium hydroxide it will fall down as the h plus ion concentration is decreasing with the neutralization reaction it occurs till the all hcl is consumed beyond this point now acetic acid will start reaction once uh, hcl is completely neutralized uh, now its acetic acid turn the acetic acid we know it is a weak electrolyte it is the conductance of the solution gradually increases due to the sodium 
ions concentration once uh, the entire stick acid is also neutralized the remaining sodium hydroxide solution present in the, present in it uh, the, um, that uh, means uh, hydroxyl ions concentration increases uh, with the addition of sodium hydroxide so you will observe a clear increase in the conductance in this graph we will get uh, three straight lines this is the first one it is uh, due to the neutralization of the hcl and the second line it is uh, due to the neutralization of the acetic acid and third line it is due to the increase in the number of hydroxyl ions so two end points we obtain in this graph the first one is corresponding to the volume of sodium hydroxide utilized to neutralize the strong acid hcl and the second end point corresponds to the volume of base required to total so total neutralization to uh, the volume of base required for the total neutralization that is the second end point so first one we indicate as v2 dash and second end point we indicate as v2 double dash here two acids we have we have to calculate two acids the first one we know the end point v2 dash so v2 dash is the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the hcl and uh, the difference between the total and uh, hcl value we get the acetic acid so v2 double dash minus v2 dash gives you the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the acetic acid in this way we can estimate uh, two acids in the given mixture now let me revise the pattern of the graphs we get in this uh, titration the first titration for strong acid versus strong base we get a v shaped graph in which initially the conductance is very high it decreases with the addition of sodium hydroxide uh, beyond equivalence point again it is increasing whereas for weak acid initially the conductance is very low due to the feebly ionized acetic acid and it is increasing gradually due to the addition of the sodium hydroxide again beyond the equivalence point there is a clear increase in the conductivity value whereas the third one mixture of strong acid and weak acid here initially the conductance is contributed by only hcl so the conductivity is falling down as the express ion concentration is decreasing after hcl nil is completely neutralized acetic acid acetic acid comes in turn and it starts reaction uh, which uh, increases the conductivity slowly after acetic acid neutralization there is a clear increase uh, in the conductivity due to the hydroxyl ions three types and three types of the graphs uh, which are very important to remember thank you